We hear this question a lot of times, how to drastically improve your pickleball game in a week or less. If you want to know the answer, stick around to the end of the video. Pickleball is one of those games that's simple to pick up but challenging to get good at. This is the defining characteristic of a brilliantly designed game. The big question is, what sort of pickleball training is best for improving one's skills? Over the years, we've gathered a vast quantity of knowledge on the improvement of sports and pastimes. And this is how we've established some improvement principles and methodologies. The first topic of discussion will be principles. In order to excel at pickleball, you must internalize these concepts. Just after that, we'll talk about some real-world strategies for enhancing your pickleball skills. So if you're ready to take your pickleball game to the next level, then watch till the end of this video. Hello and welcome to Pro Pickleball Media, your number one spot for all pickleball content. Our channel is dedicated to the fastest growing sport in the US and we cover all fun and exciting things related to pickleball. So if you love pickleball and want to learn more about it, just take a second to subscribe, press the bell icon so you don't miss any of our recent videos. In today's video, we're going to talk about 8 things that you can do this week to change your pickleball game forever. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where we will explain the best strategies to become 10 times better in pickleball. Now, let's get right into the video. Number 1. Realize that pickleball is a game of error and avoidance. This is a fundamental concept in the game of pickleball and serves as the foundation for many other ideas. Pickleball is a game of patience on the court, waiting for your opponent to make a mistake before capitalizing on their miscue. Pickleball, more points are earned due to a mistake by the opponent. The best way to triumph is to make your adversaries make blunders. Sure, there are situations in pickleball where an overhead smash will seal the deal, give you the point. Think about why your opponent popped the ball up for you to crash. Not a single skilled player is ever going to voluntarily do that. Your opponent has popped it up because you forced him to do so 99 times out of 100. This is why the term survival or error avoidance is often used when describing pickleball. The opponent made a mistake, therefore you can take advantage of it by bashing them back for a point advantage. One of the easiest ways for a beginner or intermediate player to limit their mistakes is to focus on simply getting the ball past the net. I'll get to the second reason in a moment. Number two, stop hitting shots you know you can't make. Let's be honest, we've all been there before, to everyone's amusement. I've tried the backhand third shot drive on multiple occasions. However, you should put these shots away if you want any chance of winning a pickleball. It doesn't matter if you're trying the third shot drive or some sophisticated backspin stroke. You'll probably miss the mark if you don't know what you're doing. Consistently attempting these shots will reduce your team's chances of winning the game. In a friendly game of pickleball, you shouldn't be afraid to experiment with different strokes. Every day, in fact, do not waste your time on the teams on those shots. Take advantage of your familiar effective shots if you want to get better at the game. Keep your cool on the court. You won't find yourself taking shots you don't have. Too much enthusiasm might lead to risky behavior. Of course, you're going to take some shots you know won't matter in the big picture, but the more you do so, the more likely it is that you'll actually practice the ones that do. Number 3. Dink to the backhand, not the forehand. Losing pickleball rallies is facilitated by dinking to the forehand rather than the backhand of your opponent. The forehand stroke is more forceful and accurate than the backhand stroke for the great majority of players. To add insult to injury, a backhand shot is notoriously difficult to execute and is usually a player's least powerful stroke. Keep in mind that a key component of pickleball is learning to play with few mistakes. When you dink the ball to your opponent's backhand, you give them the opportunity to make a mistake. When the ball bounces high, your opponent has a better chance of driving it back at you, so hit it down low and to their backhand. Number 4. Include third shot drops in your warm-up. Everyone knows they should warm up before a game of pickleball, but why exactly? The ball is often hit between players with no particular goal in mind. It's fine, I've been there and occasionally still am, but you might be wondering why. Will you continue to take such type of shots as the game progresses? Probably not. The type of shots you'll need to take will determine how you should physically warm up before the game. The best way to get ready for a game of pickleball is by doing this. How about the most challenging shot you'll ever need to make in a game of pickleball? This is the third time that a shot is missed. The third shot drop after stretching should be your major warm-up. There's no harm in going back and forth with your dink, but the third shot drop is more important. Here's an exercise to try. Put the opposing player in a kitchen line position. After he hits the ball to you, you can return it with a drop shot while reversing position and moving towards the baseline. Performing a series of drop shots down to the baseline. Then, pretend like you're actually playing and do a few drop shots. Having a competitor on the opposite side allows you to receive constructive criticism. Make them yell out if a ball is too high and cheer you on when you hit the target. Number 5. Have more patience at the net. Pickleball beginners may not know what patient entails. First that, in pickleball, patience involves waiting for a ball to bounce instead of trying to hit an air shot. When both teams are at the kitchen, the opponent generally hits a low dink at you. The dink isn't random. You can let it bounce and strike it back, or you can grab it if you reach far enough. Unprepared, these scenarios can be disastrous. 
What will impatient players do? Well, you guessed correctly, that they try to catch it in the air. This can lead to several problems. You can't reach far enough, so the ball strikes your paddle and goes into the net. This happens with drives and net smashes. The chance arises everyone loves crashing the ball. Sometimes individuals smash when the ball is too far into the kitchen or too low. They instinctively hit the ball and it goes into the net. What should you do instead? Well, just chill out. When playing pickleball, it's only natural to lean towards the incoming ball. If you're unsure about your ability to catch it, it is best to let it bounce. You'll improve your odds of success by doing this. You can take a breath and steady yourself before firing. Don't lose your cool. Some advice is as follows. First, you should know that it's best to play it safe. Don't chance it. You're better off letting it bounce and dinking it back over than taking that chance. I get taking chances on smashes that are out of reach, but even then, you can play it safe. Here's what I do to get my body moving. One, first, keep your legs loose and comfortable whenever you experience one of these situations. Two, if you're going to wait for the ball to bounce, then take a steady step in the direction you need to go. Third, take your time and hit the ball steadily. Being more patient while playing net will greatly improve your game. All of your unintentional miscues will magically morph into steady dinks back over the goal line. Number six, start playing with a set partner. You probably already know that when playing for fun, most people will team up with whoever happens to be sitting next to them in the paddle stack. Having a regular playing partner is essential if you want to improve your game and start competing in competitions. There are several benefits to playing with a regular partner, but communication and trust rank at the top. If you play with someone for a long enough period of time, you'll start to pick up their own playing style and court strategy. Because of this insight, future outcomes can be anticipated with more certainty. When things are consistent and easy to anticipate, people feel safe enough to open up. When playing with a stranger, though, you can never be sure that they will move out of the way if you try to steal a shot. Or still, suppose a ball is coming down the middle and you have no idea whether or not your left-handed partner will take the forehand. All of these are undesirable outcomes, and playing regularly with a friend is an excellent way to eliminate most of them. Number 7. Smash for effectiveness, not power. Overhead smashes are exciting and entertaining, but they are also prone to mishap. Think about it. How hard does a smash have to be to do any damage? So you hit your opponent with a ball traveling at 60 miles per hour. By the way, I have no idea what kind of speeds these balls can reach. What if your rival was unable to reach the ball either? Do you think it would make a difference? If you didn't slam the ball so hard and the pace dropped to 55 miles per hour, is it possible that your opponent could get it? Well, most likely not. To achieve better results, hammering the ball harder is not always the answer. Actually, things may get even worse for you. You lose command as you increase the force of your impact. The ball has an equal chance of going out or in the net. Instead, you should think about strategy and position instead of utilizing so much wrist action. You should try directing the paddle face at the ball, and this should prevent you from sending so many shots into the net. Number 8. Learn from your mistakes Ideally, nobody would ever get upset with you for making a mistake, but that's obviously not how life works. But if you spend all your time fuming over your previous blunders, you won't have time to learn from them in the moment. No, out of the context, the lessons learned from failure are invaluable. However, pickleball allows you to improve as you go. There's no use in playing the game if you're going to let blunders get you down and prevent you from trying to improve. Here's something else to consider before storming off the court in a huff. You can give your opponent a clear idea of how to counter your strategies by letting them know the specific things that annoy and anger you. Self-blame is another way your vulnerabilities could be revealed. Because of this, your losses will increase even worse. So what is your go-to strategy to improve your pickleball game? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like this video and share it with your fellow picklers. Also, if you love pickleball, then make sure to watch this next video on our channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.